the dawn of a new era in broadcasting, an exciting challenge for all concerned with television. Program makers, the consumer electronics industry, retailers, and service technicians. And above all, it will bring a greater choice of programs to the viewer. More news. Sport. Films. Drama. And everything in its place, as my mother used to say. The jewel in the crown. And music. Broadcast from space to reach an entire nation and even beyond. Each European country can have up to five new national television channels of its own, beamed directly from space to the home. Broadcast from satellites thousands of kilometers above the equator, the signals won't stop at national boundaries. It'll become possible to watch programs from other countries, widening the choice even further. But that requires the use of a single technical standard for transmission, something Europe has never had. There are two color systems, PAL and CCAM, and several different ways of transmitting the pictures and the sound. The viewer who takes his television to another country may find that it simply won't work. But satellite television expands the horizons of broadcasting beyond national boundaries. How much better it would be for Europe to have one transmission system for satellite broadcasting. A new system to give better pictures and high quality stereo sound a choice of soundtracks in several languages, and able to feed our growing appetite for information in the form of teletext and data broadcasting. And in the future, able to introduce pictures of near cinema quality into the home. This is the life. Oh, yes, this is the life. Isn't that talking? <laughs> Today's television systems have served us well. But could any one of them meet our needs as we approach the beginning of the 21st century? The Moon is the Earth's own natural satellite, inspiring man's earliest dreams of reaching into space. For more than a hundred years, scientists have known that artificial satellites could be put into orbit around the Earth. But to launch a satellite into space, you need a giant rocket. It wasn't until 1957 that the first man-made satellite was successfully placed into orbit. But more than a decade before that, an English engineer and writer, Arthur C. Clarke, already had a vision of the future. As long ago as 1945, he realized that a satellite launched into the correct orbit at a height of some 36,000 kilometers above the equator would appear to remain stationary when viewed from the Earth. Equipped with a radio transmitter, Clark saw that satellites could, using this geostationary orbit, provide a global system of telecommunications. Unlike a ground-based transmitter, which gives limited coverage, a satellite could bring immediate reception to a whole nation, or even a whole continent. The first communication satellites were small and able to transmit only very weak signals. The receiving dishes had to be extremely large, at least 20 meters in diameter. 
In the 1970s and 80s, using more powerful rockets, it became possible to launch more sophisticated satellites. Today, a network of multi-channel, low-power communication satellites ring the globe. These relay telephone conversations and enable television programs to be exchanged between continents. The cable networks, with the capacity to provide more channels, need more programs. Hundreds of cable networks across Europe are now able to pick up some of their extra programs from satellites. But they still need quite large receiving dishes, nearly two meters in diameter. The coming new generation of high-powered direct broadcasting satellites will allow reception by individuals in their own homes. The dishes will be very compact, about 45 centimeters in diameter, and maybe even smaller. A separate electronic converter unit will pass the signals to existing television receivers. Before long, the extra electronics will be built into the television sets themselves. Super Dad does it again, eh? Oh, Marie, what can you say this, Marie? I think Daddy's on his way. You thought I wouldn't do it, didn't you, Jason, eh? Well, voila, as they say in France. You can't know he's done it. La Rue de Colonnation. <laughs> The fact that new equipment will be needed for satellite reception does give us a rare opportunity to change the way in which we broadcast the signal. In the United Kingdom in 1981, engineers at the Independent Broadcasting Authority first began to take a close look at the present systems and how improvements might be made for the future. New advances in digital electronics began to open up exciting possibilities. In conjunction with research engineers all over Europe, what has finally emerged is a totally new concept in broadcasting. A family of systems that brings together our need for pictures, sound and data, and packages them in a completely new way. Mac. The present PAL and CCAM color television systems have changed very little since they were first introduced in the 1960s. The difficulty at that time was that color television had to be designed around the already existing 625 line black and white transmissions. It was essential to add to the system without suddenly making the many millions of black and white receivers obsolete overnight. So how did we go about it? A color television picture is made by taking a red picture, a green picture and a blue picture and displaying them together. What the eye then sees is a true-to-life color picture. But how do we broadcast color information when the transmission channel is already fully occupied by a black and white signal? Using the technology of the 1960s, PAL and CCAM achieved a brilliant compromise. Onto the black and white signal, we superimpose two other signals, representing the color parts of the picture. The black and white receiver can more or less ignore the color information and continues to display a satisfactory picture. The color receiver has to separate each of these signals and then electronically recreate the red, green and blue pictures, allowing us to reconstruct a picture in full color. But a PAL or CCAM color receiver can't properly separate the jumbled up color information from the black and white information. On some scenes, there's unwanted spurious color patterning. On a big screen, these effects are much more noticeable. In Mac, instead of being broadcast at the same time, the color and black and white signals are kept completely separate. The signals are squeezed and sent in sequence without interfering with each other. In the receiver, they're stretched to recreate a clearer, sharper color picture. Often neglected in the past has been the importance to television of the sound. But the last 20 years have seen a revolution in domestic hi-fi audio equipment. The compact disc player has enabled the home listener to enjoy a level of stereo 
sound quality that was previously unobtainable outside the professional recording studio. Terrestrial television is now beginning to catch up and stereo broadcasts are becoming available in some parts of Europe. But there's a limit to how many extra sound channels can be added to existing television services. Most television broadcasts still have a single audio soundtrack. Romantique et belle. Une jolie proie pour les chasseurs de fortune. Il y a de quoi s'inquiéter. Oui, ce n'est pas facile. In many countries, films are simply dubbed into the national language. Generations of viewers have never heard some of the best-known personalities speak in their own original languages. Rich, romantic, pretty, she's an easy prey for fortune hunters. You have a right to be worried. Well, it hasn't been easy. I only married John a year ago. I'm not used to this role of heavy-handed stepmother. I can see that. Satellite television, by its very nature, is national or even international in its coverage. It may have to address several different language groups within a single country or beyond. As is used in Mac allows four or even eight high-quality sound channels. Some of these could be used for stereo sound to accompany the pictures, whilst others could simultaneously carry completely separate radio programs. Several different language commentaries can be broadcast in addition to the original television soundtrack. But Mac means much more than just pictures and sound. It can be used for teletext, but with much more information than teletext with PAL or CCAM. The growing use of computers in our day-to-day -day lives increases the need to exchange electronic information between businesses or from office to home. Tomorrow's data services will demand higher capacity, a capacity and flexibility that is built into the MAC standard. The composition of the signal can be made to change almost continuously to meet the broadcaster's requirements. If there are fewer sound channels, there's room for more data. And if we choose not to broadcast pictures, there can be six times the number of sound channels or data services. Pictures, sound and data. Mac adapts to meet our needs. So how does the viewer or listener know what's available? Mac includes its own information system about itself. The viewer can choose which language soundtrack to listen to or which teletext or information service to watch. Each individual program can be labeled to indicate the type of program. This could totally revolutionize the way in which we watch television. Instead of changing channels, we could ask the television set for a news program, a quiz show, or a drama, and it would automatically try to find the type of program we want. With so many more channels to choose from, it's possible to have programs that cater for a much wider choice of specialist interests. Some would be supported by advertising. Or perhaps subscription, with the viewer paying to watch an entire channel or just a single program. An integral part of Mac is the ability to scramble both the sound and the pictures. Digital data can be used to send an electronic key to unlock the signal but only to those subscribers who've paid to watch. The only man who can live here is the Emperor. But the Emperor is on high, riding the dragon now. He died today. Mac 
is a family of systems. The original development work resulted in CMAC, designed specifically for satellite broadcasting. D and D2 Mac came later and allow cable networks to enjoy the same benefits. But they too can be broadcast from satellites. D2 Mac with half the capacity for sound channels and data can be carried on those cable networks that can't handle the very large amount of information available with C Mac or D Mac. But they're all part of the same family. And it's quite easy to make a receiver that's suitable for all three, whether received from satellite or on cable. But let's look even further into the future. Today's television systems were designed to be viewed on relatively small screens. But what if television pictures could be made bigger and wider and with greater definition? Add stereo sound and the effect could be just like being at the cinema. As it becomes possible to produce larger and larger television displays, the traditional square shape begins to look more and more inadequate. Mac will make it possible for the broadcasters to transmit widescreen pictures with an aspect ratio of 16 to 9. Existing sets with their squarer screens would simply display the appropriate part of the widescreen image. Only those viewers who want the wider screen pictures need buy new receivers. At the same time, the ability to add new facilities will encourage the receiver manufacturers to develop new designs and widen consumer choice. Mac combines progress with compatibility. The increasing sophistication of digital techniques allows the broadcasters to introduce improvements that would have been impossible only a few years ago. But the Mac family is very much more than a new way of transmitting television. It's a revolution based on evolution. And it's an evolution that will be shared by the whole of Europe. At long last, Europe will be brought closer through one family of television systems, Mac.